Okay, so a really easy bargain bin tactic for any med school interviewer to use is to ask you why you want to be a doctor. You will then give them the response, because I want to help people, which is a perfectly good response, but then they can immediately just bat that back at you with, well, why don't you want to be a nurse, a paramedic, a radiographer, a healthcare assistant, an occupational therapist, any from the massive list of healthcare and allied healthcare professionals that there are. But if we actually take a step back and cross-examine what it is we're being asked, I think it's one of the ones that's more simple to solve. Essentially, what we're being asked is how well do we understand A, what it is that a doctor does, B, how those things that they do overlap with what other healthcare professionals do, which is kind of in the nature of the question. But then finally, you have to be able to say where the roles of a doctor differ from the other people in the healthcare team. And knowing where those crucial differences lie is going to be your ticket to answering this question properly. Now, just to keep this simple, let's start with the similarities first, because I think that's going to be the easier place to start. What is it that a doctor actually does day to day? They might treat patients, they make sick people better, they might ease their suffering if it's possible to do that. They get to know their patients through the process, have them talk to them and they can learn what's going on. And generally they have a duty of care for the people around them that are sick, both when they're at work and off the clock. The kind of medical process goes that patient will come in and present with some sort of complaint, the doctor will take a history of that presenting complaint alongside any other medical issues that they've got going on, learn about their ideas, their concerns, their expectations, then they will perform an exam if it's relevant to do so of, of the system or systems that might be involved with the complaint. And then hopefully they will reach some sort of diagnosis, communicate that to the patient, give them some options for a treatment plan. And that treatment could be drugs, it could be surgery, or it could be any kind of intervention that was appropriate. Now, fairly obviously, for all those things that we just talked about, there are many other members of the healthcare team that can also do those things. Paramedics, for example, are gonna be the people that deal with first. Paramedics, for example, in emergency settings are gonna be the ones that come across a patient and have to deal with them quickly. And nurses are a great example to talk about because with further training, they can not only diagnose conditions themselves, but they can prescribe some medications as well as I believe can the relatively new group that is physician associates. Basically, I think the thing to be aware of is that increasingly um, non-doctor health professionals are able to do more and more and more, which is obviously good because it relieves the workload on doctors. And this leaves doctors more able to do the things that only they can do. And here we get to the crucial rub of this question, right? Because what makes doctors different to any other member of the healthcare team is that ultimately it's gonna be a doctor who ultimately has the final say over what treatment and what care a patient receives. And this is why training for medics is so long, at least compared to other disciplines, because when it comes down to it, you as the doctor on that ward are gonna be ultimately responsible for the patients on that ward. And that's obviously less true at the lower levels of training, but certainly as you get into specialty training or you become a GP or you train as a consultant in whatever specialty you want, you're gonna have more and more responsibility and you are gonna be making those decisions with more and more authority. And another way to look at this is that some interventions at the moment, whether it's the prescription of certain medications or performing surgical procedures or other maybe interventional radiological procedures, a lot of these things can only be done by doctors. And whether or not you think that's a good thing is kind of a question for another video. But ultimately, if you want to be involved in doing those sort of tasks, say performing surgery, medicine is gonna be your only way into doing that, at least at the moment. Of course, that's a very sharp double-edged sword. Because you're the one in charge, you have more autonomy when it comes to deciding what happens for a patient in your care. But then on the other hand, you're the one in charge. If something goes wrong based on a decision you made, it's very much your fault. If you get the diagnosis and the treatment plan right, that must feel absolutely amazing. If on the other hand, you make the wrong decision, then that's gonna feel pretty awful because you've hurt another human being. There are a couple of other simple differences you could talk about. As we mentioned before, the training for doctors is very, very long. This is because they need to understand kind of all the systems that interplay with one another. They need to understand the anatomy, the physiology, the pharmacokinetics, the genetics, everything. 
because doctors are going to be the ones coming up with those treatment plans. They need to understand holistically how all those different systems interplay with one another. And of course, a doctor is not going to know as much about genetics as maybe a biomedical scientist that's very into their genetics. You'll notice very quickly on the ward that doctors are not as good at doing certain procedures, like taking blood is a really good example, as nurses are, for example, on average, because different roles within the healthcare team do their different things and they all do them very well. That said, doctors within medicine and the actual delivery of medicine as far as patients are concerned tend to specialise a lot more in one niche area. Again, going back to the example of nurses, because nurses are amazing and they do everything, um, nurses could quite happily work between obviously a variety of different wards quite happily, whereas doctors, as they train towards being consultants and they come and they become more and more hyper specialized, um, their kind of usefulness for general medicine will go down. You wouldn't send an orthopedic surgeon to be kind of directing patients on the stroke ward. It wouldn't make a lot of sense based on the training they've had. As far as I'm concerned, I think a good answer to this question is going to revolve around that central authority. You as the medic are going to be the one making the decisions at the end of the day and bearing the responsibility that goes along with that, as well as the ability to really heavily specialise in your area of interest. Those are, I think, the two central things that are going to make that path different to others. And these are, of course, just some example talking points to get you started. As with all of these videos, the one thing I think you should absolutely never do when tackling a question like this is denigrate anyone. It's never going to be a case of doctors know more than nurses or nurses know more than paramedics. Or, that's just not the way the system works. NHS healthcare teams have a bunch of different roles. Obviously, all of them, their central goal is to make sure that patients are well looked after, but all of the different roles have their own training. All the roles are very well defined and the people that fill them are trained to be good at the particular things they're meant to do. Doctors are trained to be doctors, nurses are trained to be nurses, paramedics trained to be paramedics, and so on. In your medical school interview, you need to show that you've thought carefully about what it is that a doctor does, what it is that the other members of the healthcare team do, and the fact that you've realised that the doctor pathway is the one you want, but you need to be able to demonstrate that you understand why. That's what they're looking for with a question like this. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com to find my other videos and articles. You can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at postgradmedic. Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.